All right, so for so part two of the class, we need to do some setup. We have a project that we started to work with last month. We're going to bring it back to life to continue. I don't want to start over from scratch. We did a bunch of that already in part one. We're going to start with a, with a point where we ended up with last time. That'll require that we bring our site back to life in the process that we did on the other days last month. So I've got the, uh, the project from last month for you and the handout. Now this is version 2 of the handout of how to do this. Again, you can print this out later when I turn the printer back on. But if you go back to the network folder, and if you close the network folder, it's back on computer window, network location, drive Z. Scroll down to find campus, WordPress 2, open that folder. If you haven't copied it, there's instruction number 4 and 5. Instruction 1, 2, and 3, of course, are back on the part 1 folder if you want those. But notice this is version 2 of part 4. I gave you a part 4, a sheet 4 last month, but this has some differences. So even if you were here last month, you want to drag a copy of part 4 to your desktop or flash drive. Let's open it and look at it together. Copy sheet 4. And we'll view it. Anyone having any trouble finding that sheet? Let me point out the differences here. Uh, this archiving your site is the same, basically. Uh, I did update the version number. We've got version 1.1.6. That's the same, basically. Then in resurrecting your site, that's the same, basically. What's new, we need to deal with, eventually, the concept of having pretty permalinks. Remember, by default, our website is going to have something like victorsbakery.com slash p equals 1577 or victorsbakery.net p equals 9948. It's going to point to web addresses that uh, are just numbers. And those web addresses are the numbers in the database. And those numbers in the database are worthless for us for SEO when we get to when we talk about that. So we need to set up WordPress for it to use pretty links so that it says victor.com slash about us, victor.com slash shop instead of the numbers. Now, in order for that to work, I've included some extra instructions here, which we will do together a little later. That's what's different about version 2 of the handout. And I've also got a little plug right here for Duplicator Pro. The plugin that we've used last month to back up our site is free, and it works really well. But there's a pro version, which I think is about $40, one-time fee. And I've used the free and the pro version, and honestly, the pro version is a little better. It works faster. It makes a better backup of your site. It has extra features like automated backups. And in all of the different websites and servers that I've tested it for various clients, and my own sites, Duplicator Pro often works the best to avoid any issues. So yes, it sounds cynical. Oh, the paid version works better than the free one? Sure, but everything is like that. You pay a little bit, you get a little bit extra. And so I've got a link there. It's my affiliate link. If you follow my link, you'll get a slightly cheaper version of it, rather than the regular link. This is totally optional, but I'm just bringing it to your attention. And in my anecdotal experience, the Duplicator Pro version does work better than the free one. You might not need it, but if you do, there's a discount link for it. What we need to do then is the resurrect your site portion, because we've got a backup from last week, from last month of the class. We need to bring the site back to life the same way we were doing it on the last two or three weeks of the class. So let's do this together. First step, log into phpMyAdmin. That obviously assumes a lot, so remind me, it's been a whole week. But what does that mean? What do we need to do here? What's step zero here? The W. WAMP server on the desktop. We need to double-click WAMP server on the desktop. 
And of course, this is all on a previous handout, but if you were in part two, we already know this. Let's open WAMP server, double click it. Remember, nothing happens here that tells you welcome to WAMP server. What you will see on the corner, bottom right corner, eventually is a green W. It goes from red to yellow to green. Did everyone get a little green W on the bottom right corner? Okay, that was step zero. Now what's step zero and a half? What's the next step? What's that? Click on it. Click the green W. PhD my admin. So we're going back to the database administration screen. PHP my admin. Click on that. It should open your browser. <coughs> and it'll take you to the address localhost slash PHP my admin. This is the screen where we manage databases. So when this loads up, what's the next step? Database. Click databases at the top to make a database. We don't have a database for our website yet. So we need to click at the top tab, databases. And then in the box, create a database. We'll just simply call the database WordPress as we've been doing before. lowercase because it is it is case sensitive and when we try to bring our site back to life and we mix characters uppercase is lower cases it'll not work because capital W is different than lowercase w so WordPress and then click <coughs> create you should get the yellow pop-up that says database has been created and you will see on the left side you got a new database WordPress. Did everyone get that? Anyone need, need any help? All right, so all of that was step zero. Log into PHP my admin, create a database, which we just did. Copy your archived site from the previous step onto your WW folder. Um, from the network folder, that's our, that's our archived site from last month. That whole folder is a copy of our site from last month. The instructions say we need to copy that from that folder or your flash drive if you have a copy of it from last month into the www folder which is where? Where's that www folder? In the WAMP folder on the C drive. So I'm going to open another window I have one window open over on the network location. I'm going to open another computer window and go to the local disk C, the main hard drive, local disk C. Double click that. Then you'll scroll down to the WAMP folder, W A M P. Open up the WAMP folder in the C drive. And then we'll open the www folder in the WAMP folder. Open that www folder, and then from my network folder, you're gonna drop, uh, you're gonna copy, drag and drop the um, 2016-04-25 folder into your www folder. It's on computer window. Open up computer window on the top left corner, and then you'll see the network folder, network location drive Z. So this was copy your archived site to the WW folder. In your browser, next step, access the installer PHP file. So let's go to our web browser and type the address to access the installer file. So in your web browser, http colon slash slash localhost slash. Remember, my instructions 
say, January 1st, 2016, which is not correct. What's the proper address here? 2016-04-25. That's the name of the folder that we just copied to the www folder. Slash installer.php. Press enter. We should get the duplicator screen. If we don't get it, let's pause here. Anyone need a little help here? We need to get our duplicator screen up. All right, so in this duplicator screen, we've seen this before, you'll be asked to fill in a variety of items. Uh, so host is localhost, we'll leave that alone. Name of our database, which we just created, WordPress. Uh, my handout says that the user here is root and that the password is nothing. Um, empty. It's, you don't fill anything in for the password. To see if this worked, click Test Connection. You should get two success messages. If any of these failed, um, call me to, to check it, but most likely what happened, you, uh, you might have called your database Capital WordPress and we're trying to access it as lowercase WordPress, so they need to be consistent. Then there's a disclaimer down here that says you're about to bring back to life a site. It might take over an existing site. Be careful. It's okay for us because we're working in a test environment. But if it's in the real world, you definitely want to pay attention to what you're about to do. You're going to unpack an, uh, a, a website on, up into a database that may already exist, so you just have to be careful about that. Click I've read the warning, and then run deployment. It might, it might warn you one more time, so you want to click OK. Yes? Um, I'm sorry. Um, so I typed in that link, and it just says um, the requested URL is not found. Well, like I, like I also said, um, that says January 1st. Uh, the folder that we just copied has a date of 425. So after we've got this processing, it'll eventually load up our site and then we can continue. So I'm assuming this date is 425. Okay. Okay. Um, going back here because I'm um, If I didn't see the last, um, the last class, am I going to have a problem? Should I just 
Now eventually we get to this screen, files and database, and we don't have to do anything here, but if we, if we were transferring from one server to another, it would tell you you're on the old server, now you're in the new server. We don't have to do anything here really, just click um, run update. And so we've seen this screen before, but before we proceed here, um, Last month when we were doing this, when we got to this point, we should have seen that we probably got no errors. So check. So one is checked off. Number two, we would click to log in and save the permalinks. We'll do that in a moment. Number three is we would test our site, but again, you can do that as much as you want, but we're going to say that's done. And then we'll do number four, which is security cleanup. So we'll do those in a moment. But I want to segue slightly to, uh, to tell you here about I should have like a, a footnote here um, between 6 and 7 because this is where this set the rewrite module comes into play. In a moment, we're going to change the link structure of our site so that we have pretty links. We have links that have meaningful names. That's very good for search engine optimization. If your links are simply numbers, that's not so good for search engine optimization. You can have dates and such. That's different and that's okay. But if the names of your pages, like the about page is named 77, and the shopping page is named 249, that's worthless. So we need to put pretty links. In order for that to work, let's take a quick segue to do this part here first. Set the rewrite module. So let's leave alone what's already there and let's follow this. Click on your WAMP server icon, click Apache, click Apache modules. Okay, so in the bottom right corner you'll see the little green W, that's your Apache icon. I'm sorry, that's your WAMP server icon. Click on that once. Little green W. Then you'll see Apache. Click on Apache. And then you will see Apache modules. And a big list of extra features to the Apache virtual server. One of the features is turned off, which we need to turn on in order for pretty links to work. Uh, in the real world, when you do this on Bluehost or GoDaddy or a real website, most likely you don't have to bother with this, so it's already set up. This is just something that I've noticed for WAMP server. Maybe in the next version of WAMP server they will activate this by default because it's so useful we have to turn it on. And in my handout it says find rewrite underscore module and click it to activate it. So from this big list here, which is alphabetical, you'll need to scroll down, you'll need to scroll down and find the R's and you'll find rewrite module. Now be careful because rewrite module is right next to request module. Don't click request module, click rewrite module. Click on it and you'll see your green double, you become red for a moment, and then it'll cycle through, and then it should go back to green. You click on rewrite module, and then that should cycle through the colors back to green. Just to confirm if it worked, 
go back to the same spot and see if it's checked on. If it's checked on, then it's fine. It might have gone through the colors, but it happened quickly. Yeah. But as long as you see the check mark now on your rewrite module, you're okay. Let me confirm on mine. <coughs> My rewrite module is on. So this is one of the things that's different in this handout from last month. If you're still looking at the handout from last month, it's incomplete. You need this new version too. And we're going to need to do this every time we come back in. Just like every time we bring the site back to life, like this, we need to follow this procedure. We will do it together, of course, a few times, and then you're going to need to try to do it yourself. Because if you're trying to do this at home, I'm not there to help you. So it's better for you to try to do it here, have a problem, and then we can figure it out. But together we're bringing the site back to life. We pause at step six to jump down here to do the rewrite module, which is done. My check mark is on, my W is green. Now I can go back to seven after it succeeds. It will recommend a few steps. So back on the web browser where it was waiting for me here. Let's click number two, save permalinks. This will ask you to log in and we're going to continue to use the same username and password from last month. Um, username of admin and password of password. Now I'm going to write it up here, but obviously don't write it here. It's just that you can't see it down here. But it's password with a capital P in the password box, admin under username, admin and password. Log in. It should take you back to your permalinks screen. And now what we can do here is set our permalink structure, which is we want to select one of the ones that is better for SEO. Oftentimes the default is just a string of numbers, which is not good for your SEO. Just about everything else is better for SEO, search engine optimization. If you want Google to find your site, Bing, Yahoo, etc., the default link structure is the worst one. Any of, the, any of these other ones will work. Oftentimes, the post name is the one that's <coughs> usually recommended. But all of these are better than the default. Because all of these other ones will take the name, I suppose except numeric, all of these will take the name of the of the screen uh, and put it in the address so my contact screen will say victor.com slash contact us my products will say victor.com slash shop uh, one particular product let's say I'm selling chocolate chip cookies it'll say victorsbakery.com slash shop slash chocolate chip cookies instead of victor.com slash p7947 so this plain old numeric one is not that useful. The default one is really not useful. So either day name, month name, or post name will be good, and I will recommend post name. Select post name, and then at the bottom click Save Changes. And um, on this screen of permalinks, I can close this tab because we get the word, we get the duplicator tab, and we get the permalinks tab. I'm finished with permalinks. I'm going to close that. I'm back on duplicator screen. Like I said, we've, I've assumed we've done number three, and we'll go to number four: security cleanup. Click that one.
You'll say it's about to delete some files. Just go ahead and click OK. And we will tell it here under Data Cleanup, Delete Reserve Files. Installer file cleanup ran. These files were deleted. We have one last file to delete. Back on our folder. Back on our window where we've got the folder of 2016-04-25. We want to open that folder. And you should still see that the archive, the zip file, the one with the, with the big name, the zipper, that's part of our old backup. We no longer need that, so go ahead and click and delete that zip file, the compressed file. Just delete that. And so once we delete that archive on the handout, Uh, we've got it deleted, we're on our site, test the site, done. There should be an 11, obviously, for some reason, the one is missing. But uh, this is saying now, just go back to your dashboard, and we've got the site back. So let's pause at this point. We've brought our site back to life. Now we can put away all of that server stuff and actually do something in WordPress, but we need to do this every time we come back. We've done this together a lot of times last month. We will continue to do it this month. But let's pause right here. Does, is everyone at this point? Does anyone need a little help? Do we need the index file? Not the index file. Be very careful. Never delete the index. You want to delete the zip file. Do we need any help? So that was this section here about resurrecting a site, bringing it back to life so that we're ready to work. And this brings back a perfect copy of what we worked with last time. So what, now, we've got the, now that we've got this site ready to go, we've got a WordPress site to work with. So let's stop here. Does anyone need any help? It looks like a few people need help. If you raise your hand, I'll help you out. Just the first one. Let's maximize this window so that I can see everything. Right, so we have a site that is ready to go. If you see here um, on the on the syllabus, we have some goals for today, and, and one of them was this recap. This is about bringing the site back to life, activating the rewrite module. The point of this rewrite module. Let's see if if this worked. Uh, we're in the dashboard, the control panel. If you hover over the name of the site at the top left and click Visit Site, we'll get our home page here. What we worked on previously, we should have one blog post, Top 5 Healthy Alternatives to Sugar. Click Continue Reading. If you did not set the rewrite module appropriately, you'll get a broken link. It'll say file not found. 
Uh, did any of you get that? All right, so if you did get your article, your blog post, that means that you did do the rewrite module. Because what happened when we were in the dashboard, in the uh, permalinks screen, when we set this to use the post name, if you didn't have that Apache rewrite module, it wasn't going to be able to rewrite the old names of the pages to the new names. Notice now the, pa the name of this page is the name of my site, top five healthy alternatives to sugar, instead of P equals 9972. So this is one of the secrets to good SEO. I'm going to make some notes here as well, and I'll give you the notes at the end of the day. Let's make let's make some notes here. So SEO tips use pretty permalinks. Pretty permalinks are your addresses that look nice that have real names, real words in the address. So that would be something like what we have there, victor.com slash about dash us instead of ugly permalinks, which is victor.com slash question p equals whatever. This is good for SEO. This is good for being found by the search engines. This is not. And this often is the default. So if you've got a WordPress account and it's still set to that default of numbers, that could be one of the things that is preventing you from getting found by the search engines. So you want to check, check that when change, check that and possibly change it when you can. And the good thing is that usually uh, WordPress is very smart about making these changes, it will automatically then relink everything. That's one of the great things about WordPress. It can manage your content very easily. I will also say SEO tips use meaningful uh, permalinks. Permalinks, you should see, are also the name of the addresses of things, the URLs. So use meaningful permalinks. Use meaningful names in your addresses. So something like, uh, again, I'm going to be selling, in this fictional company, Victor's Bakery, I'm going to be selling a variety of things. One could be three-layer cake. So let's say uh, I have shop slash three dash layer dash cake. Use meaningful names. This is in the shop section. This is a three layer cake. Even better might be three layer cake dash 12 inch. I might sell, sell different sizes of these products. So I want those uh, names in the address. Yes? Why are they calling it a permalink instead of a hyperlink? I believe because in the grand scheme of it all, this is supposed to be an address that is permanent, that you're always supposed to be able to reach. Even if you change things throughout your site, that's a link that's always supposed to be accessible permanently. Same idea as a hyperlink, same idea as a URL, web address, whatever. But I'm sure there's a slightly technical reason for choosing that name, but to my knowledge, it's because it's a permanent address on the web. Question? I'm just root without an S. I'm sorry, it's admin.
That's what's it called? Way of having doing instead of just talking in, in theory. All right, so I'll be mentioning more uh, more SEO tips as, as we go on. But one of the big ones is that you want to have meaningful addresses on your uh, on your on your site. Um, while we're talking about this, I'll I'll mention here uh, the about screen. It's most common to have. Um, I'm just going to write it shorthand slash about. Um, that is just meaning I don't want to write over and over victor.com slash about. Rather than slash dash about us, I'm saying use the shorter name because that's becoming more common for addresses to have that shorter name and therefore search engines could possibly uh, be looking more for that name rather than another one. What if you got uh, what if you got interesting with it and you called yours about the company? That link of course will work, but just to keep it simpler and to be more findable by the search engines, I will call it about. Same thing with contact. If you've got a contact page, instead of calling it a contact us, contact me, contact the author, just call it contact. And then if you've got some sort of shop, this one can be either to call it shop or store. That one hasn't quite solidified into like a common address yet, shop or store. And then if you are going to have a blog, you can simply call it blog. Question? So when I have my WordPress page, and I'm adding pages to that. Each of those pages should have a separate address. Each of those pages will have a separate address because once you create one screen and another screen and another screen, they all get their own address, their own page. Okay. So you'll have your home page, then you'll create an about page, which will have its own address. And I'm recommending here to give the address of that new page about, rather than about me, about the company, just about. And should I already know how to change that address from the, um, to the pretty one from the ugly permalink? Or? Well, that's what we did in this screen right here. Oh, okay. That's how you set the pretty permalinks because okay. by default you'll get a number. And this screen will let you use the names of the, of the pages. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. However, yes. she may want to consider she's simply doing that now to her current existing site. She might then get a lot of problems. So in, in theory, WordPress is supposed to manage your links. So if you change things like this, in theory, it's supposed to keep everything linked. But there could be the possibility that if you go from one link structure to another, links could break. It's very easy, though, if you change it to this and then everything breaks to come back here and change it back to default and live with it. But if you're able to change it to this one, uh, I would. If you, she has, if she doesn't have, I don't know where it's like, but it's going to have a lot of backlinks, then they're going to be broken. Yes, and then that's why we, we touched on it, and we'll talk about it more also later. That's also why we got this plugin, the redirection plugin. Because if there's broken links from someone else's site to our site, redirection will tell us those broken links, and then we can set a redirection to go to the proper link. So we'll touch on that again. If you just want to make a note that there is a plugin called redirection that will help you fix your broken links. Okay, so I was just uh, confirming that um, our permalinks are working. I should be able to click on some links on our page and it'll it'll go from page to page. If there's a broken link, that's probably your permalinks. Uh, I'll go back to the dashboard. <coughs> so we've got a site that we brought back to life. We've got our permalink structure set up. Um, we're going to need to do this again next time, of course, as we've been doing every time because our computers reset at the end of the day. And you should try, 
to do this at home, everything that we've been doing last month and this month, you should try it at home. Remember, all this software is free. You can download it and use it at will, and you should, you should give it a try at home. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go on to the next topics, which is the big idea about updates to our site, the good and the bad about it. So it's 1.31. We'll be back at 1.41, and we'll go on.